Let's do some news! My name is Mike B, aka Phony, at times. Uh, today's date is July 17th, 2020. The time is 12.49 p.m. A little earlier, about three hours earlier, it feels like, that we normally uh, start the, the news today. Uh, and the reason was because today we're going to be racing on top of doing news. So if you're watching this on YouTube and you want to come back and see uh, how... Uh, how consistently mediocre I am in F1. Uh, you could go back and watch the VOD on my uh, Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash aka Mike B. All right, it'll be the Friday VOD. Okay, you could look there. Okay, there you go. So uh, and if it's deleted, that means I did so poorly that I just didn't want anybody to see it. And that was pretty much it. So uh, <laughs> welcome, everybody. It has been a very, very, very interesting week. Uh, uh, well, on all fields and in all industries. Uh, but today was like the it was like the icing on the cake of a fucking weird week of news not a ton but just weird <laughs> but just weird so first we're gonna lead up into something that came out today but we're gonna start with somebody who many of you are familiar with her name is uh sweet anita so Sweet Anita is a variety streamer. Stop trying to break my stop trying to break alerts, Jordan. <laughs> stop trying to break alerts. Uh, Sweet Anita is a variety streamer who suffers from Tourette's. Uh, she is uh, very aware that it is that, that her Tourette's is one of the reasons why uh, a lot of people watch her content. Uh, it does add an extra layer of uh, hilarity at times to some of the stuff that she does. Uh, and she has, uh, she, she's, you know, she's, she's, she's come to terms with it and she, uh, actually doesn't mind if people laugh at her tics, uh, and kind of, you know, appreciate what she, what it is that she does. She puts herself out there. Uh, and basically she's a good sport about it. Exactly. She's a good sport about it. Uh, and her, sh and some of her shit is hilarious. <laughs> some of the stuff that her, that her, her tics side say is just absolutely bonkers hilarious. Uh, so as with all. Uh, most all women and streamers who gain any kind of notoriety, uh, she has uh, picked up a few that want to take it a step further with or without her consent. Uh, and they call those stalkers. And she has one in particular that she's been dealing with for quite, uh, quite an amount of time. So let's go back to April 8th, 2020, where... Sweet Anita says, uh, yesterday I got a call. He has been arrested and convicted of stalking. He's been told to pack his things and banned from entering my town. There is a restraining order and suspended sentence of two months in prison. I really hope that he honors this and I will finally be safe. So this is one of the more recent uh, interactions she had with this person. Uh, and she's saying, this is potentially great news. Maybe, maybe it's over. Now, this has been going on for long before this, uh, and she's been trying to get the local authorities involved, and obviously having, uh, well, as you'll see, not a whole lot of luck. It says, she says again here, this was July 13th, just four days ago, uh, it says he did not honor it. This means I can't make this morning stream. Sorry, everyone. I'm okay. I'll just be really busy sorting things with the police. And then she goes on, and she details some of the things that uh, this person has said in her chat. She says, he stated pu this publicly last stream. Last time he left messages like this, he sat outside my house waiting for me to come out all day. Then followed me to a shop. When I asked him if he was armed, he silently smirked and then chased me. Two men had to grab him so that I could escape. And the note says, I'll kill you soon. Not with the cheap kitchen knife I had last time. No, I'm going to bring something special for you. And it says... She follows up by saying, she, I showed the police this screenshot. They have his details uh, and know what he has done to me. They said they might be able to chat to me about it tomorrow. An update. I reported this yesterday morning. They told me they would call me about it today. They did not. They said they might get back to me tomorrow. <sighs> Further. <sighs> If anything happens to me, I really hope that I'm the last canary in the coal mine. The law needs to change. No job should have such a high risk of rape, assault, or death, especially not live streaming. And then she goes on to detail some some uh, some notes, some statistics from uh, from some articles to basically discussing how you know, 55 British women were killed by men they previously reported to police. And then she says the sad thing is that this has happened. This I have had this happen before, even before streaming, and I know it won't be the last. I'm exasperated. No matter how extreme the situation, the response has always been the same. They log it and do nothing. 
she feels helpless. Um, and so further, <laughs> she says, the police came, advised me to lock my doors and call 999 if he shows up again. Neither knew what doxing is, uh, that it is a crime or what live streaming is. It would appear that no further action is being taken. I have to wait for him to harm me again before they will take action. And she says, to those offering to call my local police department, that would give him away my location publicly and invite more harm. It's kind of a catch-22, right? She has she has such an incredible power that she can unleash on the local police department there, but she can't use it because it would give away her location. Doesn't that fucking suck? Uh, and it says, that would just turn my many online stalkers into IRL ones. Honestly, feels as though there's nothing left to be done. Guess I'll just die. This is the saddest tweet I've ever seen related to this kind of scenario. Uh, she says, the officers who came, I also asked why I didn't just quit making content. <laughs> we all get stalkers. The problem is not content creators, it's stalkers. I was thinking, sure, I'll just quit and take up telesales or work in a nursery. That'll work with Tourette's. <laughs> and then meanwhile, he says, when I'll go to your house the next time, you're going to die. Then your bun bun buns and then your mum. <sighs> So yeah, reaction rather than yeah prevention. Yeah, we'll just we'll just wait until you know something terrible happens to you, and then we'll probably get around to doing something to help. <laughs> so this is this is a this is a common thing. Uh, this is a very common thing. We talked about this, you know, obviously with a lot of the Me Too stuff happening. There's a lot of uh, allegations of rape and all that, and just some of the some of the things that I think most people are now, hopefully now at least, aware of is that the police in general don't do anything because the laws are written in such a way that, and, and this is, she's in the UK, by the way, so I'm just taking this from a US perspective, uh, that you almost have to do something, period, like perform the action before you could be arrested for the action. This is not minority report or anything like that, but there should be something there to protect people who are getting credible threats from folks i'm sure that if somebody was making threats like this to i don't know the president or something like that they'd probably be getting investigated put on a list of some sort but to a lowly streamer to a woman really is what it is uh we'll just go ahead and wait for something to happen to you ma'am thank you so much give us a call when that does uh so fast forward to <laughs> wait hold on a second this is july 16th this is yesterday at 904 a.m fast forward to today and we have a new game being announced called Gamer Girl. I'll go ahead and just let some of this play out for you guys. Hey, everybody. Okay, cool. Water time, break time. All that uh, junk has been taken out my stream. Oh, come on. What do I do? Like, do I answer it? We should go for drinks <laughs> after. Yeah, maybe. Yeah? I know. What do you guys think? What you got that, guys? <laughs> no. We no, no. <laughs> Abby, you're streaming again? What's it to you? You can already see this is going in a direction, right? <laughs> This is go. This is going in a uh, in a, a very creepy direction here. All your choices matter. <laughs> I'm just gonna make sure he's okay. Tell me this is fake. I no, it's not. So. It is not fake. You can see it's devolving into quarter of a... It looks like a horror slasher flick. It's called Gamer Girl. It's a very creative naming scheme. Um, Rod, Rod ended up picking it up. It was, uh, he said it was a, it was a tweet on the official PlayStation accounts, uh, and then it was very quickly removed. I can't imagine why. Uh, if you're wondering what FMV game means, or is, it's basically a game that has the actual actors and video clips uh, where you interact and you make changes in the game that will basically play another clip. They'll record like 
tons and tons of different takes for different scenarios. Oh, you saw the, the board that has all the connections and everything that shows all the different choices you can make. And so there's video that's been recorded with the actors and act- actresses uh, that uh, will reflect all those decisions. So you could basically create a real narrative using actual actors and actual videos of real people so uh there there have been fmv games have been around since like the beginning i would say actually um what is that what was that oh god uh uh, uh, uh dragon uh dirk uh dirk the daring uh what was the name of that stupid game uh dragon's lair it was dragon something dragon's lair i would say outside of the real people thing the concept is still there where you make choice you have a real video that's playing and you're making choices at certain not dirk tickler uh, at, at certain points in the game in order to uh basically divert the story in any other in any given direction based off your decisions and so this is one of those types of games uh, the company that made this is called uh, Wales uh, Interactive here. We're going to go ahead and pull up their tweet. They have a response to this as well. Um, and they've actually made a few of these. I actually own one I've not yet played. Uh, the one called The Complex. We actually we actually watched the uh, trailer here uh, probably a month and a half, two, two months back, and just never got around to playing it. Um, Night Trap. I believe Night Trap is also probably one of them. Uh, Night Trap. So, so Late Shift, The Bunker, uh, Master Reboot, d- 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 The Complex. So yeah, I don't see Night Shift on that list. But uh, they did have a response to this. They said, Gamer Girl is about the impact user comments and actions have on streamers' mental health and well-being. The reason why FMV Future created the game was to raise the issue of the toxic environment, which can often appear online behind the anonymity of a username. Without giving away too much, Gamer Girl is an empowered story of a female streamer who with the help of her moderator friend battles the trolls and overcomes toxic characters in her stream gamer girl was co-written by alexandra burton the lead actress who improvised the entire script the research into the streaming content of gamer girl took four years and a dev team at fmv future interviewed dozens of female streamers most of whom have experienced very uh, uh, abuse of various kinds online some have even shared their experience during the interviews within the game players start to, to start the game as one of abby's friends whom she trusts and it is their job to make the channel a success but also guide the stream and keep abby in a positive frame of mind online abuse is real and still happening every day gamer girl seeks to raise awareness on the issue so you get to play a oh yeah friend or simp exactly you get to play a moderator who is uh <laughs> who's who's i guess in charge of this woman's life <laughs> her her business uh and it's your job it's your job to uh, to protect her from the trolls uh let's actually the, somebody actually posted a picture which i think is is kind of it's it's kind of shitty but it's kind of funny uh the, of the dev team behind the game <laughs> <laughs> and then the comment on the news says the fellowship of the simps oh it's too good so yeah these are the uh, gentlemen behind the <laughs> behind the creation of the game but but <laughs> of course of course of course i know exactly simulator 2020 it's yeah it, it, so obviously this has struck a chord with a lot of women uh a lot of women streamers um i haven't seen i don't know if sweet anita said anything about it yet but i'm pretty sure that she would probably be one of the first ones to say something um given that she is living this life right now and the and the first thing i thought when i saw this was oh my god it's basically a, a, it's 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 sweet anita's life um <laughs> it's gonna be a box office hit this might be Cambridge, bro. I can't control it. I know. I'm sorry. I'm trying. Didn't we need to post something like two days ago? So we, we already covered that finger. Like, that we were talking about the beginning right before this. But yeah, uh, it just seems that the timing just seems absurd that all this stuff is really happening right now. Uh, and, you know, there are people who don't understand the boundaries of the relationship that they have, I say the relationship that they have created with people who are content creators, right? Uh, I know that probably 99% of you guys know that we are not bros, like best friends. Like I'm not going to call you up and cry on your shoulder if something goes terribly wrong, right? Like personally, right? If you come to my house, we're not going to go out and grab a drink, okay? That's not what's going to That's not what's going to happen. That's not how this relationship works. All right? But, oh shut up, Black. Uh, but <laughs> 
<laughs> there are people who think that way, who think that that they're making a personal connection with the people, whereas if they were to show up at their house, that they would be friends all of a sudden. And that's just not the way it works. And there are some who think that that they have the rights to harass and basically uh, uh, instill fear into some of these folks by making threats, as you see with uh, Sweet Anita. Uh, and, and apparently this happens more with, obviously, with women. I'll say apparently, but obviously this happens more with women than men. Uh, I have never been threatened with my life or or nobody's ever threatened my family or anything like that. Uh, and so it's, but, but, you know, I've had instances where people have, I would say, probably uh, overstepped uh, and maybe taking a bit too many too many assumptions with with this relationship, if that makes any sense. Yes, of course, I'm all your friends. We play video games together. Just don't come to my house. <laughs> don't make weird weird veiled threats about the knife you're gonna bring or some shit. Uh, just don't do that. <laughs> just don't do that. Uh, so going back to Sweet Anita, actually, no, let's switch over to. Uh, so Jari had a uh, had a post where she highlighted a, a chunk from an, an excerpt here, but she says the threat she faces by an honest predator who hides in her chat. Yes. So basically, every girl streamer's worst nightmare is given the life in the form of a video game, and it says here, provided by the writer, the writer and directed <laughs> the wider wider those slip uh provided by the writer and director behind the bunker gamer girl will come uh xbox one ps pc blah 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 basically everything as you adopt the role of a moderator for up and coming streamer abby cake 99 who's back online after the mysterious disappearance of her friend becky as with most F other fmv experiences you should expect to find gamer girl featured featuring multi-branch narrative and real-time chat simulation as your role as moderator sees you controlling the stream leveling up mod powers guiding abby's choices and uncovering the threat she faces by an anonymous predator who hides in the stream's chats. <sighs> uh, did you live in the U.S.? Knives are not the issue. <laughs> yeah, we're talking. We're talking specifically about uh, about uh, Sweet Anita, but uh, but yes. Um, I, I hope we have a Karen. The <laughs> Karen is guest starring. So. Uh, hey, wait for a game like this. I'm intrigued to watch the entire run. I'm sure that people will play this just for the fact, just just to experience what these uh, what these devs have, uh, how how they how I guess how how they've articulated this story and, and what kind of choices they allow you to make. Uh, but it definitely is in poor taste. There was a game that came out probably some years ago uh where and it was right around the time well it's really hard to narrow down a time because this was happening all the time but it was right around the time we were having a whole bunch of school shootings uh and i can't remember what it was called but it was a game about just going ham and just shooting a bunch of civilians uh hatred thank you symptom hatred that's right hatred uh that was a game that was launched in a, and and with the timing of it was like this might be in poor taste, uh, but there was never a good time for a game like that. Even now, there's not really a good time for a game like that, where the primary focus is like, yeah, oh, you could do a GTA, you could go do all this stuff, but that's not the primary focus of the game. You don't get high scores for doing that. Uh, and so that was that was very quickly uh, basically called for what it was. It was trash, right? Uh, it was trash and very poorly timed. Uh, never a good time for a game like that. And then, of course, now Gamer Girl, I don't know if there's ever going to be a good t good time for a game like this either. Uh, if anything, it's just it's well. Actually, I don't want to comment on how the gameplay is, but the way that they sold it in the trailer is very, very, very troubling. <laughs> Looking, it looks like it, it looks like you have way too much input into some of these streamers or into this streamer's life. Abby Cake ninety nine. You have way too much uh, input as a as a mod, uh, and even Dejari says. I keep saying Dejari, the Dejan Mustard. Uh, it says so. So you play a controlling moderator, as if we haven't already had enough moderators who have turned creepy slash violent towards us. Dictate how this NPC woman runs her stream. But the 18 plus theme is that she's subjected to a predator. Haven't women in this industry been abused enough without having a game glorifying this reality? Be born. So gamer guy, you are a mod for a streamer with no views. <laughs> Yes, yes, wow, wow. Uh let me know what kind of meat. Hey, what kind of meat do I want in my burrito? Mmm. I'll say carne is other. Oh, bam, bam. There we go. Done. 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 Uh oh, carnitas is good. Yeah, carnitas, no, no, carnitas, carnitas. 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 What am I saying? Carnitas. Carnitas. What am I done? I mean. I mean. I mean. 
All right, anyways, back to the stuff. Sorry, sorry. Focus, focus, focus. So, uh, so yes, I... Uh, a game that is very, very poorly timed. Uh, <laughs> there's no good time for that. And uh, it's going to be released on basically every platform. I mean, you, uh, could be PC, PS4, Xbox, Nintendo Switch. This is one of those games that people are already calling for Twitch to uh, to ban from... Uh, uh, you know, from from being streamed. There's, there's tons of games on 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 the list of uh, games you can't play on stream. Most of them, most of them are for reasons such as uh, uh, nudity and uh, stuff like that, where the where the focus of the game is nudity. There's there's other games that have nudity, but it's not the focus of the game. Uh, genital jousting, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Did that one get banned? I'm pretty sure it did. Um, it's not an epic exclusive, but this is this game almost seems like a no brainer to ban for Twitch because it can very easily be viewed as a uh, as like what not to do like a training guide for people who are uh, who believe that they should have more influence over streamers uh, and so oh my god does that link work twitch.tv slash Abby Cakes don't even don't even don't 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 uh, uh, can you imagine <laughs> you got me you got me <laughs> sounds like something maybe the council should say this should be banned maybe that council that's right wow forgot all about them jeez yeah maybe the council has something to say about that uh technically you can stream uh modern warfare 2 campaign and those familiar with it know which mission caused controversy yes it was the um is the one where you go undercover as a terrorist and then you end up uh uh, and then your group ends up uh, shooting up a airport terminal with uh, no Russian. That's what it was called. That's right. They end up shooting up an airport terminal with a bunch of civilians. So yeah, that was a um, that was uh, yeah that that was a controversial uh, point for that game. So uh, no Russian. But I told you many times. Uh, give me money to dictate how much you want. Yeah, <laughs> I give you money. Yeah, I should tell you. So yeah, I'm I'm fairly certain this is a this is a win win. This is an easy win for Twitch. This is the easiest win. For Twitch is what I should say. All they had to do is just ban this game. There is no good reason for this game to make it to be allowed to be streamed on Twitch. You could play it on your own. You can review the game, but there is no benefit for Twitch to allow this thing to be to be played on their service. Uh, it is. It's. It, it can be very easily viewed as a training tool. Again, we don't know the story or anything like that, but the, the, the trailer. From what the trailer tells us, it looks like it could be a training tool for people who want to stalk their uh, their uh, uh, people they sub to. So yeah, it's just. It just probably isn't going to make it to Twitch. The easiest to win. The easiest, which means they'll probably not ban it. <laughs> <laughs> They'll probably fuck it up and just not ban it. No, it's probably fine. We appreciate the art. <laughs> Fucking council's gonna fuck this up. Uh, how to incite terror into your victims 101. Gamer girl, it's right. Gamer girl about Twitch streamer, about streamers being <laughs> being stalked. Oh, man. Um, but I need to know how to get Big Booty 82 to love me as a mod more. It's right. Uh... The, 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 Well, I don't know about that, Kimasabi. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to go there. All I'm saying is the council in general. I'm not trying to pick on anyone individually. Okay. Uh, it says, when when will the first Twitch Plays Gamer Girl channel start? Oh, Lord. Uh, bad time. Yeah, exactly. Bad. The worst timing with the Sweet Anita stuff. I actually wonder if she said anything about it yet. Uh, again, you know, we just talked about about her her story leading up to this. Um, uh, she has nothing that she has said today. It's also like it's also like nine ten o'clock there. I think so. Uh, I, mean, I don't know what time Sweet Anita goes to bed. I don't know. <laughs> Christ, uh, but I'm sure somebody does. Creepy ass stalkers. It fucking sucks that there's nothing you could do about that. It's just like, yeah, you know, we'll go, we'll take care of it when, uh, uh, you know, when something terrible happens to you. Fucking ridiculous. Been watching the new Unsolved Mysteries lately, which is nothing like what I remember. By the way, I was a little disappointed in it. It's basically forensic files, but they're not solved. <laughs> They're just open ended. It makes me mad. There's like one UFO episode in the whole series. I'm so mad about that. I'm sitting there watching it with Jen. I'm just like, I'm just like, 
I'm just like, at the end of every episode, I'm like, I'm super depressed now. Thank you so much. I guess I'm done with this. And then I, and then I scroll down through the episode. It's one episode about UFOs. It was like, somebody recalls a story about UFOs from the 60s. It's like, I'm sure that's going to be awesome. <sighs> Anyways, so, uh, Gamer Girl, coming soon to basically every platform. Look for it. <sighs> I started that the other day, and I'm like, this isn't what I remember. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so upsetting. Uh, Jen was like, does this mean I could watch the rest on my own and save that one but UFOs for you? I was like, yes, because I am done watching the show. Man kills entire family and disappears off the face of the earth. It's like, oh, okay, great. Cool. Famicide. That's exactly what I signed up for. <sighs> Anyways. Um, so trying to catch up here the french one was crazy the french one was crazy I'll, I'll give it that yeah let me if you're into like crime like crime dramas or crime or dramas uh I, I, just like these crime shows and all that stuff like forensic files or how to murder your husband and make everybody think that uh that you didn't do it shows you know there's lots of them i don't know what they're called i think there's one actually called that uh this might be a show for you the new unsolved mysteries. Jen actually offered if we could. She said, "She said, can we go back and watch uh, old? Uh, oh, do you want to go back and watch old episodes of Unsolved Mysteries?" And I said, "Yes." <laughs> I said, "Yes." Let's watch all the cool UFO ones, please. That's the ones I want. Uh, Gone Girl. Oh yeah. Jesus, that movie. That movie fucked me. Fucked me up so bad. I was. I was on. I, I was there. I was like. I was sold. I, I didn't know anything about the story. And then we got to the middle where the thing happens, and I was just like, I fell for it. <laughs> I got to the middle. And I was just like, Oh my god. <laughs> Anyways, no spoilers. But Gone Girl is a fantastic movie. It really is. It's a. It's a movie that will creep you the fuck out. Halfway through, you're gonna be wondering, wondering well, this is this the story's fine. I don't understand what. Oh, that's what happens. Okay, so. <laughs> so Dr. Disrespect. <laughs> Let's switch gears to Dr. Disrespect. Dr. Disrespect uh, gave an interview uh, with... Let me actually move my notes over a little bit closer because there's a lot of experts here. Uh, excerpts. Uh, but Dr. Disrespect gave an interview with PC Gamer, an exclusive. Uh, to TLDR, we still don't know. <laughs> That's a perfect review. Who? Yeah. So Doc Broca signed that told us nothing. So here is what I will. This is, here's what I, I, I've gotten from this. So first off, it was uh, it, Guy Beams. Uh, so Dr. Disrespect's uh, publicist is contacted PC Gamer for to offer an interview. Uh, and it seems pretty obvious why they wanted to do this uh, is because, you know, there's a lot. There's been a lot of pretty vicious rumors that have been circulating. It's what happened with Dr. Disrespect. Uh, the timing of this could not have been worse. Right in the middle of a huge Me Too sweep going across the the the, the streaming industry uh and content creation industry uh all of a sudden doc gets banned and so that just really just timing of that which just could not have been worse it was almost as bad as the time when they released a game about stalking streamers right after a famous streamer was talking about being stalked you almost you almost couldn't time that any worse so uh the the interview almost got him but the publicist stopped we're gonna get there you job what you just just spoilers with your spoilers. So, uh, <laughs> so he says, he says, who doing the news? That's right. Who doing the news? <laughs> he says, um, that he can't say that he will not be returning to Twitch. So, I mean, that's it. He will not be returning to, to Twitch. So at the very least, we know that's not going to happen. But he, he clarifies further. He says he's considering streaming independently on his own on his championsclub.gg website, in addition to other big options like YouTube and Facebook. Uh, he says, I've, he says, quote, I've seen all the theories. I've seen all the possible conspiracies. And it's just like, I'm just not interested in engaging in that kind of stuff. Uh, and he says, OK, so here's how the breakdown happened when he actually got it. Uh, he says, so we got the news, you know, it was just, it was completely, it was a total shock. I mean, imagine just going to work one day and the door is closed and you can't get inside uh, and you've been told that you were fired and you've been, and you weren't given a reason why, you know? And so for me, it was just an initial shock. The way I discovered it too, I was on a buddy stream and some of the, my features started turning off while I was in chat and, and everything. And then all of a sudden social media was blowing up. I got, probably because the streamer bands tweeted it out and everybody freaked out. Remember that? Uh, and he says, I got on a call with my 
my team, and after one quick email, it was all over. I'm guessing the email was the uh, your account has been uh, banned uh, email. As on a buddy's stream, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that was uh, Tim the Tabman or something, right? I don't, I don't really know what the what the, the context of that could be. We'll slowly pan this thing. It looks professional, doesn't it? Uh, and so he says, uh, he says, I had to get off social media. I mean, I just, I just, just to see all the speculations and theories, things that my name has been surrounded with. Again, the Me Too stuff, and it was just really heartbreaking to see us to a certain extent, to, uh, to to a certain extent, because we've worked so hard to get to this point. And so the question was. Um, he was streaming, but he wants to pretend it didn't happen during that. Well, we know, but so so we're, we'll get there, uh, actually. So uh, he says, uh, so are you able to confirm that legal action is taking place? You are taking legal action against Twitch. And he says, we are considering taking legal action. Uh, and he's, and then, and then he mentioned specifically the quote, cause we played it here too. We played it. It was very, it was very, as a matter of fact, let me, uh, it's actually down here. Uh, it was the final moments of his previous, uh, stream and it was, it was pretty suspect. Oh my gosh. Da, 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 da. It was pretty weird. Uh, let's see. So we go, we're forward here right around like here. I know, right? D no. David Ike. I'll be no bad. No. Dun dun dun! You better not taunt me. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Come on, doctor. <laughs> so it was just a strange moment at the end, and so he 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 told he asked him about this because this this was a, this was a moment that everybody is speculating on. We we tore this thing apart, going through this thing like what happened? What happened? Watched the whole damn thing uh, several times to try to figure out what happened. He got the call, and then all of a sudden his mood changed and all that stuff. And he says he says. Uh, he said, everyone's watching the clip and being like, this is the moment we found you, but you're saying it was completely unrelated. And so he's saying it's completely unrelated. So one facet of the story is that you... Uh, is... So, yes, he's basically saying that, that this, this, this whole thing that we saw was completely unrelated. He says he does have moments where he breaks character and he communicates with chat, uh, which people who have watched his stream regularly have said the same thing. They were saying that not... Not since this happened, not since the the uh, the the interview, but they said from the get go that he does sometimes break character and talks with chat. It still seems weird to me personally as an outsider seeing what happened in this eight minutes where he gets the call, things get really weird, he gets really quiet, and then uh, yeah, five five five. Come on now, exactly. Come on, son. It does seem weird. Uh, then all this happened. So so he says yeah. It's interesting timing for sure. <laughs> and so further down, uh, you know, he talks about, he said, you said earlier that you're not interested in taking this exclusive deal, but is there a specific platform where you're looking to migrate from the near term, n n the near term? And he's just kind of just talking very, just very vague. He doesn't really know what he's going to do. It's, this was definitely a damage control interview. It was like, people are running away with these wild speculations of what, what he's done. And he wants to make sure that he's squashed some of these things. And you know what? Like, some of the stuff that we've heard, I mean, I've I've seen theories from people that make it sound like he sexually assaulted somebody at Twitter or some or sorry Twitch, and then it was like somebody in you know who worked who was an employee and didn't want to disclose a name or something, and so they ended up just banning. I don't know, I don't know. It just it's just it's is there's all these things, all these claims, and he's trying to squash them by putting on an interview. And I feel like if he did something that was uh, as uh, terrible as that. He probably wouldn't come out and try to play it down like this, but you never know. You never know, but I don't think so. I just, I just don't, I just don't feel like that's happening. He's let, he's uh, leaving Twitch so he can uh, stop walking, man. Uh, and so he says, let me see. Da, 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 da. Uh, this other part I did not grab. So he does say that uh, over here with uh, Rod. Here it is. This is one facet of this story. Excuse me. Is that, uh, and I'm sure you're aware of this. There are people coming forward and saying that they know the reason you're banned. And Rod Slasher, uh, he was, he's been on, he's guested on numerous podcasts. He has gotten a plethora of uh, of new followers uh, after stating that he knows what happened. Uh, he he, uh, and then a couple other people have stated that, including I think Rod, uh, that like this is something that's going to damage his entire career. And it's a big deal and all this stuff. And they know the answer, but they can't tell what it is. It's so mysterious. And he says, listen, again, I'm not interested in engaging in any of that kind of stuff or that crazy speculation. I'll say it again. I have a great community of loyal fans and I'm totally focused on uh, just getting back to the Champions Club and delivering great, entertaining content. So uh, going back up here, there was a moment where we where the uh, he was asked a question and then the lawyer actually intervened here. Um 
And so he says, Dr. Dispatch, Dr. Dispatch is a very controversial character, and I don't need to tell you that, but uh, it's almost baked into who he is as a person. Do you think that Twitch singled you out uh, because maybe it felt like you were just too controversial for the platform? He says, honestly, I don't know. I've been very transparent with those around me and my community for the, over the past few years. I'm not a perfect person. I've made mistakes, but if anybody knows me, follows me, I've stepped up and taken full responsibility each and every time. And behind the scenes, behind the curtains, a lot of people don't understand how much work I put into becoming a better person for myself and my family, as well as the business. And then he says, sure, and I want to talk about that but first you did recently ruffle a few feathers after sharing a video during a stream uh, of dr thomas cohen and he was talking about some coronavirus theories uh you've been you've been open recently and sharing some of your own thoughts about coronavirus and even relating it to things like 5g networks even on your last stream you were talking about david ike and his documentary i'm curious in bringing up these those thoughts and i th and i think it's okay to call them controversial did you ever did that ever result in twitch saying anything uh to you or warning you he said no he says so do you, you don't think that might be the cause and he said i don't think so in fact i and then his publicist gets in and he says we're getting really close to dangerous territory here it's almost like a cookie cutter response right it's like a sample he just hits the button he goes right it just happens and he says <laughs> He says, so, you know, Doc, we don't know why Twitch banned him, and there is no formal warnings or reprimand on record. That's all legal is going to let him say. So, when we almost had something, we still walk away with nothing. Uh, so, Iris says, uh, as I said in Discord, my money uh, at the moment is on sexual misconduct allegation with a Twitch employee from before. Explains the sudden ditching. Explains why Doc's wife didn't throw a shit fit about a new charge of misconduct. Explains uh, a lot, the lack of a denial on uh, the interview and explains why Doc just doesn't want to address it. There, There's a lot of... Um, there are a lot of theories. Yeah, there's a lot of theories. Uh, the one that I heard that was probably the most salacious and and obviously, you know, there's no evidence to support it was that somebody very much in line with what you were saying, uh, Ira, is that something happened between Doc and somebody who was an employee, but that employee was paid to keep quiet because this person kept on. As a matter of fact, it was um, Samantha Wong, I think is what it was, is that people were assuming that it was her because remember, Samantha Wong and Justin Wong, we covered this on the last news show. Um, uh, Justin Wong was VP at uh, at Twitch previously, a VP at Twitch, and uh, came out saying that Twitch did a terrible job of addressing a, uh, a situation that his wife was in with a well-known individual who then later still managed to get, you know, a VIP slot at the following TwitchCon, uh, even after everybody was made aware of what this person had done. And so, so even myself, I felt like I was like, that seems like a link. That seems like a link, a possible link. Uh, and... And then the theory that kind of wraps along with that is that this person was, and I'm not saying it was Samantha Wong, but but whoever this person was, was paid to keep quiet uh, and to allow Dr. Disrespect to continue streaming. Uh, and then she decided during the Me Too things like, no, no, it's time to just go ahead and just let everybody know unless you're going to pay me more money or whatever, you know, who knows what the result of that was. Uh, and that just resulted in uh, in Twitch severing their their uh, their contract, their multi-million dollar contract that they had with Dr. Disrespect um, and then banning him permanently. So all of this stuff is speculation because we got an interview and we got fucking nothing. God, it really, that's had coming up a lot lately. It's coming up quite a lot. Uh, he did, uh, he did, he did, uh, uh, tweet a video out. Um, doesn't really tell us too much. <clears throat> doesn't really tell us anything actually. Uh, I still feel this time with Mixer dying is just too convenient, right? Yeah. This, he has nowhere to go now. Let's let him go. Couldn't be any more vague. Yeah. Like, oh, oh what could we get from this? Is, that, is he releasing an album? <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, sounds like good fitting exp uh, uh, speculation. Using the words, right? It's out of my hands. You can never take away. You can never take away. The power of my and I don't know what that last word is, but Jesus Christ. Oh man. That's oh soul. Is that what it was? Soul? Uh, soul. <laughs> uh, this is a uh, quality thing. Like David Hasselhoff on the Kung Fury album. That song is awesome. Fuck off, top. That song is amazing. Don't you 
sheer disrespect. Hasselhoff like that. So I was, though it wasn't intentional. Uh, <laughs> so we know nothing. Uh, <laughs> we know nothing more about this. Uh, if we're Doc DMCs, every Twitch stream that plays this song uh, on Twitch to get back to tw oh gosh, yeah, maybe, maybe. Uh, uh, so we'll we'll have to um, we'll have to just keep you keep on uh, paying attention and seeing uh, whatever. See if anything happens sometime in the next couple of weeks or whatever. But it has been weeks now. Whatever this is, is the most closely guarded secret of all time. So many things get leaked from everything. From people with mega top secret clearances. Stuff still manages to leak. But Dr. Disrespect's ban reason? Nobody really knows. And the ones that claim they do know say, Well, I can't say anything because I might get, uh, I might, I might be sued for, for, uh, uh for something. Um, and uh and yeah so i fuck who knows call everyone he has to know that's right why how why house leaks more than this it's for, it's true like government entities have leaked more than this it's ridiculous how do we not know <laughs> damn it so yeah we know he's considering taking legal action so whatever it is it's severe enough that they are threatening legal action in this case um the last we heard from Dr. Disrespect prior to this music video uh, is uh, that they have not given him, given him a definitive uh, reason as to why he's been banned. So we still know, like I said, fucking nothing. Jeff Bezos' daughter accidentally banned him and uh, we, can't, we can't take it back. Well, there is an option for him, though. It is very possible if he wanted to. He could go ahead and actually start up his own streaming service using... Amazon's interactive video service. Look at that. So you too can go ahead and sign up for this service and have your very own streaming platform on where on wherever the white label service. You could put it basically wherever you want. The price for it <clears throat> is let's see. Uh, let's go down here. Da, 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 and it says uh, actually let's go right down here. So. Standard channel is two dollars per hour times two hours, four dollars. Uh, I see. Da, 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 it looks like it's going to be about uh, for one hour of footage, or for two hours of footage for three for uh, for two hundred viewers uh, across a multitude of different formats. Uh, it will cost you about thirty four dollars. So yeah, you could do it. You could totally do it. Just pay. You could pay to stream. This is actually pretty decent pricing compared to what I remember services like Blip and other like live stream services that we had to use like JV Player or whatever the fuck to use. Uh, this is actually pretty reasonably priced, and it's probably because it's Amazon. Uh, where where are my Bitcoins? You still haven't sent me the 80k. I know we're gonna get there. Don't worry, we're gonna get there. Uh, the legal of doc sounds like a disagreement. We're paying out the remainder of a giant contract. Maybe maybe uh but yeah there's an option here if uh, any of you guys want to if you're like fuck twitch i'm gonna go and stream on my own you can <laughs> you can very easily it's 130 okay let's go move on to the next story <clears throat> so earlier this week twitter got hacked Twitter got hacked in, in uh, probably the funkiest of ways. Wednesday, I think it was. Um, let's start at the beginning. So first off, it started with a link. <clears throat> uh, Binance's Twitter got hacked. Bitcoin's Twitter got hacked. Uh, Coinbase's Twitter got hacked. Okay. Now, I know some of you guys already know the results here, but let me go ahead and paint the picture for those for those folks who maybe missed a lot of this stuff because this is this it is very very intriguing the way all this stuff went down and then also what the results were so far. And we have updates, recent updates uh from Twitter regarding this. So, so uh the initial link that they were uh that these compromised accounts were tweeting out uh were sent to uh, as you can see right here crypto cryptoforhealth.com. And these started around, uh, you could see this tweet went out at 1219. Uh, you could see this was uh, 930 people. I don't know what time zone that is, but let's just say probably around noon or so on Wednesday, this stuff started. Uh, <clears throat> it didn't get a whole lot of traction. The site was actually very, very quickly uh, taken down by Cloudflare and, 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 uh, Cloudflare and labeled as phishing. 
And so this is what you'd get when you go to that site that they were initially throwing out. Uh, and they didn't really get, according to the, uh, according to this thread here, which is very, is, is pretty extensive. Um, he was checking on the actual Bitcoin address and how much money they're making. And he says, looks like they're not getting anyone fooled. They're not really getting a whole lot of people. And if you think about it, and I've said this before, but like people who are savvy enough to own Bitcoin or any kind of cryptocurrency uh, and uh, and also, and then people who are dumb enough to fall follow uh, fall for uh, you know for cryptocurrency scams or like Nigerian scams. There's not a really a whole lot of overlap there, especially people who follow you know Binance, Bitcoin, any kind of cryptocurrency, Twitter. Probably not going to fall for this kind of stuff. But then it made the leap to other industries, and that's when we saw <clears throat> people like Elon Musk was getting hacked and it says i'm giving back to the community and this format was pretty much the standard format uh across all the tweets and it said i'm giving back to the community all bitcoin sent to this address below will be sent back doubled if you send one thousand dollars i will send two thousand dollars only doing this for the next 30 minutes here's my bitcoin address enjoy and so i actually caught i think the first one of these that went up um and it was so bizarre so bizarre and at first i was like i know elon musk is is a bit of an outlier i think he was hacked but <laughs> i wouldn't put it past elon musk to do some weird shit like this uh and so <clears throat> money actually started to roll in it wasn't just elon musk it was kanye west uh, and I assumed that, and then I, at this point I was just like, maybe because they were in the same house together, they got hacked. Um, hmm. Then, uh, Floyd Mayweather got hacked. Then, uh, uh, Triple Extens Extentacion, <laughs> uh, came back from the dead to also let everybody know that, uh, he was, well, he was looking to give back to the community. It was a whole bunch of blue checks that were getting nailed, but it wasn't just entertainment slash industry. So like Twitter celebs, uh, it was also, uh, let's see, uh, Joe Biden got hacked, um, and it's hard to call it a hack once we discuss what actually happened uh, or what we know what happened so far. Um, uh, Michael Bloomberg got hacked. Uh, uh, Barack Obama got hacked. Fake Barack Obama got hacked. I got hacked. Uh, <laughs> and at this point, AOC, uh, probably one of the more tech savvy representatives that we have in the government right now, uh, she put out a quick a quick uh, notice, basically saying, "Hey everyone, there seems to be a large Twitter hack happening right now, targeting large accounts. Please be vigilant about any Bitcoin scams and do not click any suspicious links. Just in case, if my account tweets any bizarre links to related to cryptocurrency, do not click it." Now, this was made at 2:28 p.m., so you could see within a two and a half within a two and a half hour window. Uh, this has now made it up to basically, you know, it's getting to the point where now everybody knows about this. Within this two and a half hour window, and we were watching this live on stream on Wednesday. It was, it was the one we we had other plans, but those were all set aside immediately for this. And so we started to uh, follow the amount of money that was being transferred here, uh, and we saw <clears throat> uh, not too much by this point. I would say at this point we were probably sitting around maybe. 75,000 something like that but like 40,000 of that was one single trans transfer and then that money was transferred out almost to make it look like people for people who are tracking the actual uh actual wallet they make it look like it was a valid account being uh, transferring money back and forth um and so it uh during this time Twitter actually went through and blocked and they, they locked down all blue checks. Uh, and we know this because JP comes back and he says, holy shit, y'all, they had us all in a room. We couldn't tweet about it. Bruh, sorry. <laughs> and we couldn't tweet about it. Uh, <clears throat> April, it's not April, get out of here. <laughs> Uh, so we know that they locked we, they locked people down. They couldn't even, they couldn't uh, tweet or do anything. Um Mr. Beast got hit. Mr. Beast, probably the most believable one because he he actually puts out a ton of, uh, he does a ton of uh, giveaways on his Twitter account. Um, and you, there was follow tweet, follow, follow tweets just like this, where it's like, first it would say, here's the, you know, send me money, I'll send you double money back. Uh, and then it says, just sent out over 150,000. As a matter of fact, I think I have the Kanye West one. The Kanye West one was even more absurd. Yes, just sent out over $2 million dollars easily verifiable that that was not the case uh also the same thing with uh with uh, mr beast but it doesn't matter because these are not we're, we're now well outside of the realm of people who are 
both cryptocurrency savvy and also not dumb enough to follow for fall for uh uh for a, a nigerian prince or whatever prince scam um and so they are starting to make money at this point. They're starting to make money. Uh, Rachel Tabak, who is a security specialist, makes a hypothesis that social engineering is the culprit. This is around 2.12 p.m., around the same time that uh, the AOC puts out her thing. She says, yikes, strongest hypothesis is that the hackers, so the attackers have owned Twitter's employees ad- employee admin panel, which allows Twitter employees' ability to change passwords slash disable MFA to allow an attacker to take over a prominent account and tweet on their behalf without de- uh, dealing with their password or MFA. So this this a good a good hypothesis now she uh, in terms of who she is uh, she actually maybe you guys have seen this video uh, where she goes through and she actually uh, in within two minutes compromises a voting machine these are real voting machines that the US uses uh, during elections by the way uh, it took about two minutes where she gained admin ad, admin access to this uh, this machine uh, but yeah this you probably have seen this video floating around um, so she <clears throat> let me see which one is this one I didn't label this tweet. Oh, yeah. So this is the, the, the hacking thing. Yes, 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 yes. And then it turns out, it turns out she was right. So Twitter does finally make a response uh, talking about what happened. She says, we detected what we believe to be a coordinated social engineering attack by people who successfully targeted some of our employees with access to internal systems and tools. We know they use this access to take control of many high visible, uh, including verified accounts and tweet on their behalf. We're looking into what other malicious activity they may have conducted or information they may have had access to. And we'll share more here as we have it. And so... I so, said, do you want to get more info with me? No, no, so you can't. Okay, so, so yes. So let's go back to AOC for a second. Let's go back to AOC for a second because it came up during, while we were following this whole thing, uh, it came up that it's weird that like no, no Republicans were hit with this thing or whatever, right? Well, also no Democrats with this underneath their name, right? This there's a, There is a special account designator that has this type of thing and if you go to like i mean like mitch mcconnell let's go to mitch mcconnell okay we all love mitch mcconnell so we'll go to mitch mcconnell and i'm sure probably says underneath his tweets does not of course not oh senate majority leader actually i wonder if he has another twitter oh maybe he doesn't um but it does that bad example uh but it does not show uh it we it it doesn't seem that accounts that were that have some extra layer of verification which i imagine you have to have in order to have this some extra layer of something that we don't have as, as plebs um and these accounts don't seem to be hit so i don't think i don't think this was a this was not a Republican or, or or a Russian government hack or anything. I don't think it's anything to do with politics. I think this is purely somebody who s- social engineered their way in, try to make a buck off of this, and then and then try to, to bounce. Uh, and actually, somebody even said here, what was it? Uh, I, th- I think I saw. I thought I saw. Oh yeah, it, Martha. This is the best description I saw. It was a smash and grab. There you go. Uh, you probably need the double secret master admin panel to mess with the political accounts. Yeah, you probably need something because I mean, getting access to political accounts could actually start like not war or anything, but still, it could could really really cause some some damage more so than you know getting uh, even Elon Musk. You know, even Elon Musk or, or Kanye West. You know, uh, Michael Bloomberg got hit. Um, uh, Let's see, I think, oh, Apple's Apple's official Twitter account got hit. Like so, 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 so many. The total damage that I've calculated here, there was two accounts that were used. The total damage for the account number one uh, was 393 transactions, which when you think about the scale of who was tweeting out the these scams, and they were coming like, I mean, the tweets were being deleted, but then very quickly being reposted so like elon musk tweeted like four times the same the same thing uh they were just they were trying to basically remove them as quickly as possible but if you consider that only 393 transactions took place across all usage of this which was the main uh um address that's pretty good the amount of money they got was 117,862 and that's just what i've tracked here using this um then they switched to another account. There's there was uh, there was a total of I think like four accounts, and I actually have a a, a cool uh, there's a cool site that will kind of lay lay that out for us here. But uh, later we saw that they actually got uh, Kim Kardashian West, and this one it says feeling nice. All BTC sent uh, to my will be sent back and doubled. Comment enjoy, and then this this actual address is different, and 
Uh, this this was the only place that I saw this address. I did not find a single other account with this specific address, although it could exist. Um, and the amount of people that fell for this one through her account was 38 people for a total of $5,064. So there were some fat transactions in here for sure. Uh, now, let me see. So now, in terms of like where the money is going, uh, that's something that you're going to have to figure out. Because when it comes to like money laundering... Typically, you take it and you filter it through a whole bunch of different services. You buy stuff. You you, you move money through accounts overseas, whatever. Uh, and I'm assuming, uh, as somebody who's not uh, not a an expert in money laundering, Bitcoin laundering, I'm assuming probably work functions the same way. So here we see the center, which is the main account, and then we could go and start branching off. Let's pick one of the bigger ones here. This one's at four point four two nine two, so basically four and a half Bitcoin. And then we open this up. And we see this leads to, uh, see, this is fed, actually. Let me see. Oh, that was being fed in. Let me go out. Let me go out. No, 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 no. Let's go on this one here. There we go. Can we pull this out? Let me see. Got some money here. <laughs> see, this is what I'm saying. So this money was sent here, 3.8 Bitcoin. And then we have 2.7 went to this address. And this opens up to these. Let me see. Uh, one, two Bitcoin got sent to this address. And those are, have now been sent to, to this one. This one's got almost the entire thing. Just chipping away at it a little bit. We're now like 10 steps away from where it started. We're going up to this one. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, it looks like this might be where it stops right there. Okay, so we know that there's money there. Uh, <laughs> here's five Bitcoin. Let's see where that leads. Oh, look at that. Quite a few. Can we get that out of there? Let me see. Whoop. So much fun. Um, hmm. Let's go to this one. <laughs> let's see where that... Oh, look at that. That was three and a half Bitcoin. That went out to a number of folks. Let's see if we pick another one here. Uh, let's see what's the biggest... They're all small amounts. There's so many small amounts. And then it just goes on and on and on. It just keeps going. More Bitcoin going to someone else. I mean, look at how many steps we're taking. Uh, it's just, it's just, it said, so Bitcoin laundering is too easy to trace. Why waste your time? Well, I guess they're just going to continue doing it. I mean, look at how many accounts there are. Like they're just going to keep on filtering out little bits at a time. Like look at how many of these accounts that just basically take uh, a little bit of what they've taken in and then filter it out in two different directions. And this one is mixed with multiple because this one gets 1.7 in, sends out four, receives three and a half, sends out another two. So which of this money, which of this money is money that was laundered? How much was circled back around? If I follow this chain, am I going to eventually make my way back to the web? Let me see. Uh, let me see. Uh, we'll double click on this one. Oh my God. It just keeps going. Let's zoom out and see where we're at here. That was too far. <laughs> oh, we lost it. Oh, dang it. Sights. All right. Well, it's gone. Uh, <laughs> that's a shame. Why you do this? Detail level. Oh, okay. Detail. I was, there was a pro improper zoom. Okay. Well, as you can see, uh, it's been filtered and laundered many, many, many times over. Uh, BitQuery actually has a an article where they discuss uh, how much money, and their findings are actually much more than what I've seen. But I, I would, I'm going to assume that they probably uh, they probably know this a little bit better than I do in terms of like working with Bitcoin um, or cryptocurrency in general. Sorry. Uh, and so their claims are that the total amount of money that was transferred was 20.553 Bitcoin, which amounts to about 188 thousand uh, dollars. Over 600 transactions, still, still not a significant amount considering the out the reach that these guys had. So, I guess it's kind of a good thing, right? It's kind of a good thing. The strangest hack. So, oh, 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 I was like, let's go back here. We do have more updates from Twitter, and uh, we'll pull those up here. <clears throat> Doesn't sound like a lot of money. I know, considering who you were able to take control of. You know, oh, I got Elon Musk Twitter. I got Kanye West Twitter. I got Joe Biden. So I got Barack Obama, 120 million followers Twitter. Like, come on. You would think that you'd make more money than this. But thank, thankfully, people had are just said just savvy enough and so this is the uh the official twitter support thread where they're going through and they're talking about what had happened so he says here's an update addressing questions we've heard around passwords and account access specifically because i'm sure some of you guys who have not been following this are probably wondering is my twitter account safe uh and he says we have no evidence that attackers access passwords currently we don't believe resetting your password is necessary out of an abundance of caution as part of an incident response yesterday we have to protect people's security we took the step to lock any accounts that had attempted to change the account's password during the last 30 days 
days. So if you have changed your password in the past 30 days and you go back into your accounts, you may encounter some issues. Um, and it says, as part of the additional security measures we've taken, you may not be have been able to reset your password. Other than accounts that are still locked, people should be able to reset their password. Now, if your account was locked, this does not necessarily mean we have evidence that the, uh, that the account was compromised or accessed. So far, we believe only a small subset of these locked accounts were compromised, but are still investigating and will inform those who were affected. And so he's further to say, uh, we've been working around the clock and we'll continue to provide updates here. We want to be more specific about the updates coming in the second day of our investigations. And so they're they're basically going through and detailing. They they do not think that anything was compromised. Uh, as they stated before, they were socially engineered. If you watch Mr. Robot, you've seen it happen a million times over. You think it just happens on TV? Apparently it does not. Um, but the, uh, the, the only... The only substantial losses were through 600 transactions totaling an amount of $188,000 from, and, and again, 40,000 of that will all came in on one single transaction. So, which I, I do believe that that was something to make it look legit, to make it look like it was a legit account that was, uh, uh, that was operating, but I'm sure we'll find out more. Twitter actually seems to be really transparent about this, discussing this. So uh, by the time this video goes up on YouTube, we may actually have more updates in terms of like what kind of access they did have overall and if they still have access. Um, so <laughs> it has been an exciting week. We still have a little bit more news to cover. Oh, shit. It's almost two o'clock. Like, for example, <laughs> uh, always hold it in your wallet. Yeah, yeah. Every investigating congressman next question by the twenty third. Yes, that's right. That was the other thing. I don't have that tweet that tweet up, but um, uh, it was reported that uh, that the government is inquiring about what happened, and they want to know what you know what's basically they want an explanation by the twenty third. So uh, we will know by next week more. We should. Um, there was a lot of uh, uh, speculation that this could be something related to. Um, uh, this could be a, a means or a, yeah, basically a stepping stone for the government to start regulating social media, which would be right now, probably pretty bad. <laughs> we need to control Twitter. Hmm. Uh, yeah, that would, that's not necessarily good. So, so, so moving on, we got to go race. So moving on, uh, re-reckoning has been announced. Re-reckoning has been announced. It is the new or the new, the uh, remastered uh, Kingdoms of Amalur, re-reckoning. Uh, they're going to make it prettier, update gameplay, all that stuff. Honestly, I don't remember how bad the game looked. I thought the game looked fine. It, I feel like it just came out two years ago. <laughs> it was like eight years ago or something. Um, and they are... We'll turn that off. Uh... But this is now. This is not Thirty Eight Studios, by the way. This is THQ Nordic, same uh, publisher who brought brings us Wreckfest. Uh, I, they bought the rights to the Kingdoms of the Kingdoms of Amalur uh, 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 IP in general uh, last year, like middle of last year or so. No disclosed amount as to how much they paid for it, um, but I imagine whatever money they paid for it probably went right back into the taxpayers' money because they took out something like seventy million dollars or something like that in taxpayer money for Rhode Island. So. Hopefully those Rhode Island folks are getting uh, getting a kickback of some sort. Probably not. Uh, <laughs> Rogue Legacy Two was delayed. We were actually I was looking forward to playing it uh, yesterday Thursday, but turns out it was supposed to be next week Thursday. But that uh, has been pushed back now. It is coming Tuesday, August eighteenth. Uh, so Rogue Legacy Two coming next month. I'm looking forward to that personally. Did I really, 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 really loved um, uh, loved. Uh, the first one. And the last thing I'll touch on, because this just came up, so I don't have a whole lot of details, but just all what I say is on the surface, it seems like people are freaking out over the, for the wrong reasons. Uh, this might come up. It says, new, according to an internal GameStop memo, distributed to employees, workers are not allowed to enforce the mask requirement in their stores. So what is what does this mean? Uh, people are taking it as GameStop is saying, we don't approve masks we don't we don't feel the need to enforce masks all that stuff what i feel like is being said is gamestop is saying please don't try to reprimand customers who will probably come back and fight you or maybe kill you on gamestop property it would probably not be a good look that's what i get from this i feel like that's what everybody should get from this uh yeah let's not force minimum wage employees to uh enforce these things Maybe you should hire some kind of security team if you're that worried about it. Most GameStops, uh, 
exist in strip malls and regular malls uh, that have the means to hire security or already have security. So they should be the ones handling this, not, not some random kid working the counter trying to kick people out because they're not wearing a mask. It's not their jobs. It's just not their, their jobs. So that's what I'll say about that. All right, that's what I'll say. I've been in four altercations at my restaurant bar that I work in for the last for uh, in the first three weeks of being reopened. Exactly, we there are people that have been killed, like a ninety nine cent store, dollar store. Uh, I think uh, the uh, and then a bus driver. It's 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 absurd. It's absurd. Yes, yes. Please wear your mask. Please wear a fucking mask. We're we're getting really bad right now, and we may not even know what those numbers are in the future, but we do know that it's getting bad. Uh, and if you just wear a mask, it's really easy, and they look cool. Who doesn't want to be? Who doesn't want to look like Sub Zero? Just do it. Uh, but no, we shouldn't require uh, employees to uh, to have to enforce these rules and without have you know, without I don't know being paid to be like a bouncer or something. <laughs> like please, 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 please. So that's it. <sighs> Masks look great with my beard. You need a bigger mask. James Harden had a mask that covered his beard. He didn't really know what it meant, though, but uh, he wore it anyways. So, uh, yeah, it's out there. You could buy it. You get a mask that covers your beard. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Uh, my name is Mike B. My lovely co-hosts here. Thank you, you folks, for hanging out and not spoiling the whole thing. I know it's been a weird week. We have to get all that stuff out. Can I get a Bane mask? Can I get a Bane mask, please? That'd be amazing. Uncle Jets. Uncle Jets. Thank you guys so much. Time to get to racing. My name is Mike B. AKA Phony. Follow me at twitch.tv slash AKA Mike B. Twitter.com slash AKA Mike B. All the news are AKA Mike B. Photo. And that's it. So cool. All right. Ha 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 